Hello dear friends! If you have watched episode 1 with the presentation of basic tools, episode 2 with the use of basic tools, episode 3 about lines, faces, groups and components, as well as the episode on setting shortcuts, you are ready to move on to designing models. If you haven't watched them yet, I will provide links to them in the description. On YouTube you will find many tutorials on how to design various objects, but most of them are not useful to us or cannot be transformed into reality. I will design multiple objects that are useful in everyday life and show you how they can become a reality. The keys or key combinations will appear on the footage on the left side and you can identify the tools only based on the shape of the mouse pointer. Unfortunately such a presentation could take quite a long time so I will probably divide the tutorials into multiple parts. As we progress with the projects, I will specify fewer and fewer steps, especially if they have already been described before. I hope that my version will be the easiest to follow and understand for all the viewers. If you find this episode useful and interesting, I invite you to watch other tutorials on this channel, give it a like, subscribe for free to be notified about the release of new episodes, or even share the clip with friends who are passionate about DIY projects. This is the first part of the tutorial on how to make a computer desk with a keyboard stand. I will use the model I previously created because I have already built it and the dimensions of both the tabletop and the boxes seem ideal for what a computer owner might need. This piece of furniture will not have doors or drawers because they will be the subject of a much more extensive presentation that I will make in future episodes. For now, you need to get familiar with the program before moving on to more complex projects and building them. I have cleared the toolbar of all the plugins that you may have seen in other episodes because I do not want to confuse you and I will not use them for this model anyway. I have only kept the basic tools that you surely have after installing the program regardless of the version, so let's get started. First. I will create this box with shelves for various objects. I will start with the side panel made of plywood. The easiest way is to measure the width of the piece with the help of a ruler and we can see that it measures 500 millimeters next to the pointer. I enter my new project just as it appears to you and using the mouse I set the perspective from above towards the surface delimited by the green and red axis. With the rectangle tool I draw the footprint of the first piece on the ground. We extend the rectangle to see the order of dimensions in the box on the right hand side. We see that the first dimension is the length, so we enter the length measured earlier of 500 millimeters, followed by a comma, and then the thickness of the ply sheet used which I choose as 18 mm. We press enter and we have the first phase of this project. Now we will measure the height of this piece and see that it is 740 mm. So we select the created face and pull it out. In the bottom right corner a distance appears, which is the distance we want to extend the face. The direction is set by the position of the mouse relative to the face. We pull the face towards us as much as we want, enter the distance from the keyboard, press enter and we have created the first 3D element. However, for now, we have only created a set of faces and lines. To materialize it, we press space to return to the select tool. We quickly click on the assembly consecutively and after making sure that we have selected the entire assembly, we right click and select make component. We can enter any name we want for the respective component. For example, 18 mm plywood. I do not name each component as it takes up a lot of time and as you will see in the next episodes, this is not even necessary. 
What is extremely important to do, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is to make sure that we transform each created assembly into a component and assign it a material. Only then can we export a correct list of required materials and, implicitly, a correct cutting diagram, as you will see in the episode about the Open Cut List plugin. Without doing this, we will only have some lines and faces that will not be recognized as solid bodies. To assign a material, we need to activate the default tray with materials and other information related to our model. We right-click on our newly created component and select Entity Info. Do not be scared of this bar, it is extremely easy to use, as you will see in the episode dedicated to it. We scroll all the way up and the first menu is related to materials. SketchUp comes with some preset materials, but we can also create new materials with the desired textures. Here we have preset materials for masonry, textiles, glass, plastics and many others. I will stick to the preset materials for wood. I hover over each material with the mouse and choose the texture I like the most. I will use cherry wood. Once this material is selected, it will remain on the base material and it is enough to click on it and then click again on the desired component with the paint bucket. Now we have a component with a certain material and texture. As you will see later, it's not necessary to apply the exact material we will use to build the desk. Going back to designing, I measure the distance between the side walls of the first box. It's 460 mm inside. I go to the new project and using the tape measure tool, I create the reference point where the interior corner of the second plate will be located. I make sure that I am on the same axis by checking that the line is green, parallel to the green axis at the back. I input the distance at which we want to create the reference point from the keyboard, followed by enter, just like creating a line with the desired length. I exit the tape measure tool with space, select the plate that we will copy with move. I activate the move tool with the mouse or the shortcut key M. I click on the corner that will become the interior corner after copying, move the element on the same axis, press the control key and we have created our first copy. Click again and we have positioned the second plate exactly at the desired distance. It should be noted that a copy of a component will still be a component with exactly the same characteristics as the source element such as name, material, texture, and so on. Therefore, there is no need to use the make component command or assign the material. There is a small problem to clarify about making copies, which I will address a bit later. To delete all guidelines made with the tape measure tool, I recommend going to the edit menu and selecting delete guides, because when you have many of these lines in large projects, it will take a long time to delete them individually. To create the bottom plate at the necessary height, we'll first create this small baseboard. Make sure we've selected the correct points by zooming in closely with the mouse scroll. I measure and see that it has a height of 60 mm, which is the only dimension needed as the rest is constrained by other components. Using the rectangle tool, we create a face with a length of 60 mm and a width equal to the thickness of the board, which is 18 mm. We then use the push-pull tool to extend the face and observe that we can limit it to a set length based on the edge of this plate as a reference line. 
Click only when you are sure it has locked onto the face or edge of the component or else it might pass through it and you'll have to apply additional commands, wasting time unnecessarily. I almost forgot to create the component. Make sure all assembly elements are selected, indicated by the blue color. Now let's move on to the bottom plate. Upon careful examination, the quickest way, in my opinion, is to create a new face with a rectangle. If I were to create a component without the constraints provided by other elements, it would take much longer. So I create the face with the desired dimensions and use push-pull to adjust it to the desired size up to the back edge. We quickly create another component and assign the same material. This is an example of what happens when we don't select the correct assembly from the start to create a component. The faces have already stuck together, so we'll have to redo the component. From here on, we'll go into details Using the same methods as before, I create the back panel. For the top plate, I don't need to measure anything. I only need to re-enter the illustrated length and the thickness of the board in the same predefined order.
Moving on to the second box, I will use the same tools as for the first. As you will see in my example, as I mentioned earlier, there's a small problem with copies of clones of components. This means that if we modify the characteristics of a clone, the characteristics of the clone part will also change. Look at what happens to the cloned part. To avoid this, simply right click on the clone and select Make Unique. It is best not to create groups unless it is strictly necessary to move assemblies composed of many components. The more groups you create, the more time you will waste in order to access the desired group. Therefore, after you have completed each component, make sure you have exited any group so that you can select each component with a single click. I'll let you watch until we create the desktop.
To reproduce the countertop, we can use the rectangle tool to measure both the length and width instead of measuring the two sides individually with the tape tool. To quickly fix the countertop in the center of the assembly of bodies created, I will create it starting from one of the corners of the assembly by entering the dimensions measured with the rectangle tool. Now I measure how much larger the countertop is on both sides. I divide the axis by 2 and move the countertop on both axes. On one of the axes, the axis is 75 mm, so I will place the countertop so that on one side it will remain 38 mm and on the other side 37. When we build the desk, this difference will certainly be imperceptible. However, if we create models where deviations are at the micron level, we can add more decimals to the unit of measure from the following menu. Window, Model Info, and choose the desired measurement precision. For furniture, one more decimal will be sufficient for any measurement. Now we can move the countertop by 0.5 mm to be perfectly centered, at least at the design level, if not in construction. And we have come very close to the final shape of the model designed by me, but this episode has already become too long and I don't want to bore you, so I will conclude the first part of the tutorial on how to design a computer desk in SketchUp. I invite you to watch part 2 in which I will add the necessary metal rails for the keyboard shelf and insert a model from the 3D warehouse with a computer 
for a scaled visualization of the model. If you found this episode useful and interesting, I invite you to watch other tutorials on this channel, give it a like, subscribe for free to be notified when a new episode is released, or even share the clip with friends who are passionate about DIY projects.